Right, so we can now move on to step three, where we are going to wrap up this calculation and calculate the value. So first we start with the present value of the free cash flows. And guys, this is the number that we calculated in step two. So if we jump to our example, you're just going to bring that amount down from your calculation in step two. Then next, we need to add or deduct any excess or non-operating cash balances. So once again, if we jump to our example, please just be careful with dates here, guys. Remember, this is the present value of your future cash flows. So we forecast all of the future cash flows and we calculated the present value in step two. So this is the value at the 30th of June, 20x6. So you're going to take into account the cash balance at the 30th of June 20x6. So if we go back to the statement of financial position that you were provided with, at the 30th of June 20x6, the company has a bank overdraft of 500,000 rand. So obviously because we are dealing with a bank overdraft, we are deducting the bank overdraft. If the company had a positive cash balance, you would obviously add that to the present value of your free cash flows. Then next we are going to add the value of any non-operating assets, which are valued separately. That will then give us the overall firm value. So this is the total value of all assets. All non-operating and operating assets, the total assets of the company. Then after deducting debt, we'll be left with the market value of equity. So let's perform this for our example. We were given the market value of non-operating assets. The company had an investment and we were also given the market value of debt. So the market value of investments is 2.2 million rand and the market value of long-term borrowings is 5.2 million rand. So we can then take that into account over here in step three. Add the value of the investments, that will give you the overall firm value. Deduct the market value of debt and you then have the value of equity. Then once you have the fair market value of equity, we now need to consider owner level or shareholder premiums and discounts. And the first thing that we need to consider is a control premium. Now please note guys, the free cash flow method will always give you the value of a controlling interest. So this value that we've calculated over here, that is going to be the value of a controlling interest. Always, if you are using the free cash flow method, this will always give you the value of a controlling interest. So that means even if you are valuing a controlling interest, you would never add a control premium, otherwise you would be double accounting for it because this value over here already reflects control. So you can see that just below. Not applicable because the valuation already reflects control. However, because this value calculated over here reflects control, we do need to consider whether a minority discount needs to be deducted. Now, in this example, we are calculating the value of a 30% equity interest. So we are valuing a minority interest and we therefore need to deduct a minority discount. So if we jump to our example, you can see I'm deducting a minority discount and I'm using 15%. Remember, you can refer back to page four where I've given you the different ranges for all of these premiums and discounts. So as long as you use something within that range, you're fine. I'm using 15% and I'm deducting a minority discount. And the reason for that is because we are valuing a 30% interest and this valuation method is reflective of a controlling shareholding. 
So this value that we calculated above reflects control. So because that value reflects control and we are not valuing a controlling interest, we need to deduct a minority discount. All right, and then just you can see above for the control premium, we are obviously not adding a control premium because we are valuing a 30% interest. However, you would never add a control premium if you use the free cash flow method because this value over here already reflects control. All right, then we need to consider whether a marketability discount needs to be deducted. And remember, we deduct a marketability discount if the shares are less liquid. So in other words, if it's more difficult to sell the shares. Now, Avery is a PTY limited, so a private unlisted company. So it's definitely more difficult to sell the shares, meaning we need to deduct a marketability discount. So once again, guys, you can refer to page four for the ranges but I'm deducting a marketability discount of 5% over here. Then lastly, we need to consider if there's any BEE lock-in discount, and you were not given any information in this question, so that's not applicable. And finally, easy marks over here, guys, because this will always be a consequential mark, so don't forget about this. You must multiply by the percentage shareholding that you are valuing. So we are trying to calculate the value of a 30% equity interest in Avery PTY Limited. So we just need to take that final amount that we calculated over here and multiply that by 30%.